It's that kind of evening, I know. Jingle bells, welcome everyone. I'm in that kind of mood today. Merry Christmas, happy holidays. I want to welcome you officially to the last money date of 2018. Wow, if you've come to all of them, you are the best. Hi, Tony, good to have you here. If you haven't been here before, welcome. Awesome to have you. Hi, Lisa. Great to have you here. Merry Christmas, everyone. As you guys are hopping on, I want to make sure that you... Let me just turn this music down a little bit. Actually, I learned a, um, an exciting trivia, kind of a fact about the Jingle Bell song. I didn't know about that, but um, it was actually originally not a Christmas song. It was a song that was written for Thanksgiving. I've got to look up more details about this fact, but um, anyway, as of today, it is still one of my favorite um, holiday songs. So I hope everybody had a great holiday and enjoyed time off with the family. I want to talk to you about what have you accomplished in 2018 as, um, let's see, okay, turn it down a little bit. So what have you accomplished in 2018? I want you to think about this question. It is not something you're gonna answer in just um, a few couple, a few minutes that you got. I want you to really pause and reflect and sit down and plan for 2019. Now, this is something that I do myself every year. Yuri and I have a tradition um, that we've been doing for the last uh, 10 years or more probably. I kind of lost track, but at the end of the year we, um, sit down, we find a very cool place, um, a restaurant we have not been to. Uh, but before we go out just for you know our regular dinner date, we each sit down separately and review what has what has happened in the you know the previous calendar year. Um, and then we get together and share and you know plan for what is going to be done and accomplished in the new year. I'm going to share with you how I do this kind of review and what you know what tools and um you know uh, i put in place for myself but we before we get in this is one of the reminders that money dates that i've been talking about for the last 52 weeks of this year are all designed to give yourself a reminder hi mom good to have you a reminder about what you need to be paying attention in your financial life. Now, there are three basic things that I like to monitor, right? They are, Lisa, if you're watching, you've heard me talk about savings. So how have you been tracking with your savings goals? Number two are your expenses. Where are you with your expenses? I am guilty as charged in terms of uh, blowing my budget for the month of December. Um, there are a couple of good reasons, but mainly holidays, right? And you're trying to please um, in terms of, you know, entertainment, gifts, and things like that. So my budget is over overstated for the month of December, but I knew that going in. And of course, how are you tracking with your financial goals? And so this is what I'm talking about with you today. What have you accomplished? Now, these are not just financial goals. Although this is a money show, I still want to talk to you about your habits, right? What have you said to yourself you're going to do and have you done it, right? Um, you know, your personal goals, your improvement, right? How have you grown personally over the last 12 months? So as we dive into, hi Misty, Merry Christmas. As we dive into discussing of what I've done for myself that helps me kind of have a clear path and clear strategy, you chime in and let me know what you're doing um, and, and, and we'll get this money date started. Now, as you guys are here, I know everybody just coming back from holidays or hopefully not and you're not working this week, but I want you to share with me your highlights. I want you to share the, the, the gr gratitude filled positive moments you've experienced over the last couple of days. So all this last week, everybody was in the holiday mood. So what has been awesome that you can share and drop, uh, drop something in the chat. Um, that way I know you here. As for me, um, it, it was a quiet Christmas. It rained like cats and dogs here in Northern California on the 24th. Um, so we stayed in, but um, you and I got to relax and watch a whole bunch of movies. 
Hi, Tanya. Good to have you here. And we actually also got together with our friends um, on Christmas, uh, Christmas Eve. Um, so those are kind of the highlights for me as it's been a little slow at work, but I've been working, working all day today. Um, so in the chat, let me know what you guys are grateful and um, excited about over the last week. I also want you to start thinking about that for go going forward for 2019. I feel like January is one of those months is that everybody's gonna come out and say, I've got my New Year's resolutions. This is what I'm doing. This is how I'm going to be staying on track. And by the time February rolls around and, and March, things are just not where you want. So let's give ourselves an opportunity to first realize where we are. So I'm gonna share with you three things that I do. Three, three, I know how to count. <laughs> um, that kind of get me straight, right, and focused on what my targets and what my goals are. Um, sometimes I'm not excited to face my, um, you know, projections and what I said I want to do for myself just because I wasn't focused enough, right? But that's okay. This is how you actually reset, right, and start over. So it's never too late. Now, I don't like to set New Year's resolutions, right? I, Because I, I, those are almost guaranteed to fail. So if you look at it from a different angle and don't make January 1 is the first clean, clean date, start today, right? Start tomorrow. But since we're in this kind of a timeline right now, I thought it was worthwhile checking, um, checking and sharing that with you. So here's what I do. And I look, I, I've been asking you to pay attention to what I share with, with you on the, money, uh, on the money dates. And the number one thing that I found to be helpful is to actually first take a look at the wins that you have. Hi, Zoe. Good to have you here. Merry Christmas. So take a look at the wins that you have accomplished right, over the last 12 months. And so don't start out, right, with the fact that, oh my gosh, I did not get this done, right? Whatever was on your list January 1 of this year, and you're looking back, hopefully you've had a list, and it's just not there. So make a list of all the wins that you had. Now, why do we start with the wins is, is very simple. It really reshifts, right, you're, you're thinking about what you actually wanted to accomplish. Now, um, one of the, uh, in the last couple of weeks, I attended an interesting webinar um, about how to, you know, how to actually uh, give yourself an opportunity to grade yourself for, um, you know, the things that you've accomplished and how to plan out the goals for 20, uh, for, for the next year, for 2019. And our presenter talked about making a list of 52 wins, so basically one for every week, right? And it took me actually a good weekend to sit down and just, you know, kind of randomly write down what I could recall, right? And it's not like something you could do in an hour. If you could, good for you. Maybe you need to have more wins. But actually go back and think about, you know, what, what has happened and where, where you were at the top of what you were setting to do. Now, until you get to that list of 52 wins, I want you to make a very short and very simple one from the list of goals that you had at the beginning of the year. So as you are looking, I'll give you some examples. Now, because this is a money show, we're kind of talking a lot about finances. So here are some of the most typical goals that I see my clients set for themselves, right? And as we work together to accomplish them, we come back and review. So um, maybe you've hit your savings goal, right? So if you had a savings goal of $10,000 and you've hit that goal, so give yourself a win. Writing down really, really helps connect, right? The dots in your mind and start recognizing, oh my gosh, I've actually come much further than I, than I thought at the beginning. Hi, Susan. Um, good to have you here. So did you, did you hit, hit your um, savings goal? Were you on target with your overall spending? Did you pay off that credit card debt that you were working you know, really hard towards? Did you get a side you know, hustle job because you had an idea to earn more income? Did you apply for that insurance policy? Whatever it is that's on your list and has gotten accomplished, give yourself a win for that task, right? Or for that um, goal that you have. 
Did you have any specific goals, right? So these are more of the task kind of oriented. Was it a personal goal that you set for yourself? Was it, was it a goal that you wanted to read one book a month and now 12 months later you've read 12 books? One of my goals I'll share with you on the personal side, um, I did not set a specific number of books that I wanted to read in 2018, but I, but I did set a goal to read 10 pages every night. So every night before I go to bed, I had to read 10 pages. At the beginning, it sounded like this, I had to read, right? Because it was something that I was trying to make a habit of. But after a while, it actually became kind of a, a competition with my own self about, all right, um, you know, how fast, <laughs> how fast can I finish reading a book? And so, you know, sometimes 10 pages were um, kind of a, on a stretch because I was tired. Other nights, it was like, all right, I can keep going. So this is one of those examples. Now, I think I'm ready for this year to give myself a goal around how many books I want to read because I worked on my you know, other habit that is now more consistent, right, than it used to be. And I can now say, all right, I'm gonna have a specific goal. I haven't even actually thought about how many books I wanna read. Um, but at least I am on track with reading 10 pages a day. So these are, the, these are the kinds of wins I want you to think about. If you can come up with the list of 52, one for each week, that's awesome. The other thing I actually just came across this weekend, which I'm gonna work on doing next year, um, get a, uh, you know, those uh, glass jar that has a screw top and, uh, you know, write, put a little sticker on the top, uh, on, on the top of it and say goals. It's goals slash wins. Every week as the, as the calendar unfolds, so I'm going to start on January, you know, January 1st, at the end of the week, write one thing that you feel like you've accomplished and you won and do this every week for 52 weeks. On New Year's Eve, when you sit down to celebrate and review how you've been and what you've done, take out your jar, right? And you're not allowed to look inside that jar. Take out that jar and start reviewing. I, I can guarantee you that you probably are gonna forget what you've written six months ago as far as you win. But this is my challenge for Yuri and I for 2019. And I'm gonna see you here again, right next year, New Year's Eve. And I'll share with you my jar with all kinds of wins. So um, this is one of those challenges, but I hope this is helpful in terms of not beating up yourself for the things that you haven't accomplished by looking at things that you have accomplished first. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two is um, to take a look at what you actually didn't accomplish. And you have to do that. As, as painful as it sounds, as much as you want to avoid it, and I'm just like you, I, I don't want to face it, right? And I don't want to look at the list of my goals and say, all right, these are all the winners over here, but I really didn't work on you know this, this, and that. Um, but the reality, my friends, are you've got to face it. Because what that presents is an opportunity for you to improve. And so as hard, um, as hurtful as that is, um, it needs to be done. So let's take, take a look at the, at the losers, right? That um, did not get on the list of things that you want to accomplish. So what is it? Did you not have a spending plan in place? Many, many of you struggle with this particular one. I know there are different tools online. I frequently suggest using Mint or Personal Capital, those aggregation programs that sort of run in the background for you and you don't have to worry about kind of, you know, letting somebody else or something, right, like a financial tool, um, help you track that. Um, whatever it is, did you not, did you accumulate more debt at the end of the year, just because the holidays are here, you have to travel or buy more gifts? Or did you just blow your December budget for whatever reason? So look at what you didn't accomplish and right next to each of the things that you didn't accomplish, write why. Why did that not work? Why did you not do that? Ooh, I better make sure that we have enough power here. Um, can you guys, I'm sure you can still see me. Um, so why did that not work? Why, why you didn't accomplish? And I want you to be really honest with yourself um, because only then you can actually improve 
right? And give yourself a chance to take a pause, reflect, and put an action plan in place so that next year, right? Because my, my step number three is not only to take a look at what I didn't accomplish this year and turn it around and say, all right, these are gonna be, these are gonna be my goals for uh, next calendar year, along with other things that, I, that I've thought you know, um, about and wanna add, but these are the things that I'm gonna continue working. If that's no longer, if, if, something, if you had something on your, on your list of things to work on, whether it was a personal goal, a financial goal, if it's no longer there, I want you to put it to bed. I want you to give yourself that opportunity to say, okay, I've had this on my list of things, whatever it was, maybe you wanted to read more books, maybe you wanted to lose a few extra pounds, uh, maybe you wanted to learn a language, maybe you wanted to uh, you know, become a public speaker or um, you know, just use social media more often or reach out to your friends um, on a daily basis or you know, call your parents every week, whatever that is, reconcile with yourself so that you can actually let go. It also relates the same way to our finances. If there's something that you're still struggling and it kind of gets pushed to the back burner, I want you to reconcile and give yourself an opportunity to understand why you're not doing it. And if you need any help, reach out for additional help. Don't be shy to ask other people what they are doing and how they are getting those things that you're struggling with accomplished. I found that to be the most gratifying kind of aspect, right? Not just to look at what I've done and how proud I am where I, you know, where I've come, but also look at what I didn't do, what I sucked at, and, and what can I work on going forward and ask for help. That, my friends, was the most satisfying piece out of all of the setting goals, you know, setting targets, reviewing and accomplishing things. You know why? Everybody talks about, you know, focus on your, focus on your strengths, focus on your strengths. But when you can look back, right, um, and, and, and give yourself a much, um, a much bigger review, right, or you feel like you've accomplished much more than, than things that already sort of, you know, uh, are second nature to you, um, it is a lot more satisfying. And I tell you that from a personal experience. So whether it relates to your personal finances, things like savings goals, having a spending plan in place, having a plan all together. How many of you out there have a plan in place? That's a question. So if you have a financial plan in place that has specific targeted goals, that you know you can track and come back every year, drop an emoji in the, in the chat and let me know because I find that most people never really set a specific plan for themselves. Now, today I'm not talking about that. Today I'm talking about giving yourself an opportunity to review what you've accomplished and setting up a clean, focused uh, you know, schedule, plan, whatever you wanna call it for the next calendar year, whether it's 2019 or going forward in 2020. Now, the other thing I want to mention to you as you, as you laying this out is one of my mentors, Danielle Delgado, um, has taught us and Lisa and I were in a mastermind group together earlier this year, is, is to break your goals into a smaller chunks. And so 90 day increments. That has been a tremendous help for me in terms of taking a really big goal and I like to set goals that are crazy, unattainable, impossible. Hi Diane, good to have you here. So set the goal to be something totally unreachable but then divide it into smaller chunks because let's face it, all of us can commit to doing something for 90 days, right? Whether it is, and I'll use some of the basic you know, personal finance related examples, but spending, everybody has, you know, has a challenge with their spending, right? Whether you make a lot of money, you make a little money or somewhere in between. So give yourself 90 days to look around, right? And see what are your habits? What are your behaviors and how can you change it? Commit to tracking it for 90 days. You can quit after that, but at least, and you know what happens? Most of the things that I've broken down into 90 day chunks actually stuck around with me 
a lot longer than those things I did not have the 90 days um, around and, and, and you know and, and set with targets like that so as you planning out think about by end of March of next year which is not that far where do you want to be on your huge gigantic goal where do you want to be so as I close out for um, for today my friends it's been fun and exciting for me to show up here with you and share um, you know share these um, times and remind you that if you don't give yourself time and opportunity to have a money date with yourself it doesn't have to be with a professional but the idea is again for those of you who are new is give yourself a chance to understand where you stand with your money if you don't pay attention and one of my um, favorite quotes from Grant Cardone one of my other mentors um, who talks about the fact that and I'm not exactly remembering but it's something like if you don't pay attention to your money it's gonna leave you for somebody else who will and I think I'm butchering it a little bit but you get the meaning give yourself a, uh, an opportunity maybe not um, not often right or not consistently but from time to time if you at least have the, you know do the 90 days run 90 day runs and repeat them over and over and over again after a while you'll see that the consistency piece sticks and that's really I think the secret sauce to any success in life that you try and achieve whether it's to make more money be better partner you know be a better boss better employee whatever else it is consistency is the key to everything let me know if you have any questions about what I discussed I do have a quote to close um, with but it has to, it, it relates to to setting goals and I I want to tell you this one thing I'd rather come short right of the goals that I've set up then come close right or even be over because what that does to me personally right as my targets are high and crazy and unattainable it just it, I think in short it just boils my blood more so the quote says set your goals sky high they must be unattainable and then don't stop until you get there I wish you guys and gals a very happy holiday season Merry Christmas Happy Hanukkah Happy New Year let's let's start 2019 on a different note and close out 20, 2018 with some of these things that we discussed today if you have other ideas and want to share with me let me know I would love to connect if you want to participate with me and share a money date next year also let me know send me a DM or leave me a comment on my Facebook page I'm interested in learning from um, all kinds of people what they're doing with their finances, what kind of successes they're having, um, as there is so much more to share to go around. Thank you so much. Um, it's been a total awesome, awesome year. I am excited for what 2019 has to bring. And let's continue giving ourselves an opportunity to date our money because that is the only way we're going to stay on track. Thanks so much for watching. Happy holidays.